Hello, it's Super Bowl Sunday, and this is Philly Philly coming to you live. I apologize for the delay. Just lots of things getting in the way of the stream coming on today, but thank you for joining us. And we are making Philly soft pretzels today. Um, wearing a new hat, a new Eagles hat that I got from Hubs, and super excited about it. And um, we are excited about the Phillies playing today at the Super Bowl. So I felt like it was good. Eagles. Oh, the Eagles, thank you. I'm a little nervous because I was a little anxious. Anyways, I'm super excited about our Eagles playing. You can tell I'm a little hyped up. Uh, making Philly soft pretzels for the first time. I've never, I mean, I've made just regular pretzels and then this fall I tried making Bavarian style pretzels. Never have I made Philly soft pretzels and that is something our city is known for. So I kind of want to catch you up to speed as to what I've done so far. So I did a lot of pre-work let me check on my Joe now. Because of the amount of time that was going to be needed to um, have the Joe rise, and because of the fact that I knew today was going to be busy because we have preparations to make for our um, Super, Bowl, Super Bowl party tonight, that I was not going to be able to make the dough, let it rise for an hour, and then try to make the pretzels. Just wasn't going to have the time. So I apologize for that, but I am going to let you know um, what I've done. And then I also will make a short video uh, showing the process that I did do previous to this. So I'll show that later. Um, but I did want to welcome everyone to the stream. If you are joining me for the first time, welcome. This is an iconic one being our Philly soft pretzels. Um, and if you're returning, thank you for returning. So uh, let's take a peek first. Actually, no, it's almost like Christmas day. Let's kind of wait a little bit and see um, what we did before to, before we reveal this. So it was actually a little more difficult than I expected to try to find a, a pretzel recipe for the Philly soft pretzels. I was really trying to find something that was um, kind of certified that I would be completely convinced. And if I'm being honest, I kind of struggle with that. So, and I'm usually pretty good with Googling and, and looking for things. But what I ended up on was this pretzel recipe. I have the link below. And um, what, it, what first of all, it's submitted by PA Hiker. So I know it's someone local. So that made me feel a little better. Um, and I like that he talks about it being, or he or she talks about it being almost like bagels. And that is one of the things that makes the Philly soft pretzel different than just any old soft pretzel. There's a doughiness in it that is almost bagel-like. It's it's um, denser, moister, just really, really delicious and, and different. And so you'll see with our process that even what we're gonna be doing today is different than when we did the Bavarian style this fall. So the first thing I did was I mixed sugar, water, and yeast together so I could get them to dissolve some warm water. The amounts are on the link below. And then um, I added flour. I did not have malt, um, so you could substitute sugar if you don't have malt, so don't let that keep you from making these pretzels. Salt, and then it said, which is something people who don't cook a lot, and even myself who cooks a lot, it makes you a little bit nervous because there aren't exact amounts. But one thing I know about making all sorts of dough, from sweet dough to savory dough, is that with flour, it all depends on making these kind of doughs. A lot of it depends upon the dryness in the air, um, Conversely, the humidity in the air. So a lot of times there aren't firm amounts that you really just got to kind of play and touch and, and see how it all feels so when it's right. So don't be scared about that. Look at it more as an adventure and know that your um, payoff is going to be really yummy. So um, so it's just really fun. To me, I think that's something that's fun about cooking. Um, and I think even when you're looking at something like a recipe that's a dough recipe that uses yeast, you know, just kind of look at this adventure. There's a lot of science going on there. So what I did was I first mixed the, the called for dough, which was three cups with that mixture of sugar, warm water, and yeast. And I got that mixed well. And then I, um, oh, I'm so sorry, I take that back. First, I took the three cups flour. I mixed in it my sugar, my two teaspoons sugar instead of the malt. If you have malt drink powder, you can use that and one tablespoon of salt. I mixed it up just so it was really incorporated. Then I added it to the wet ingredients and I got that going. Then I started kind of tipping in a cupful 
at a time of the flour till it seemed to come together. And one of the things it mentioned in the recipe was you wanted to know that when it came together, it wasn't super sticky. It actually says not sticky, but I kind of know that um, part of that means it's like super sticky, that it wasn't like really pulling with your finger. And so when it got to that point, I actually used my KitchenAid stand mixer because um, I did the initial mix with the regular mixing paddle and then I put the dough hook on for the, you know, when I was drizzling some cups of flour in. So that way it kind of could help knead it a little bit in the bowl, which is one of the advantages of that KitchenAid mixer, which is really nice. And then I did my final kneading on, um, my counter here and it is you know you could use a wooden surface you could use a regular counter if you have a stone counter i think the cold always helps with that i lightly floured it and i kneaded it until it was super soft and then i um kind of flipped it around put it in my bowl and it's ready for the next step so uh, ds hello happy super bowl sunday thank you for joining us um, making my first Philly soft pretzels. Have you ever made any kind of soft pretzels before, my friend? Thank you for joining the stream, by the way. In fact, I'm gonna take my rings off because I definitely don't want those for this. Let me get them off. So we're gonna be doing some more mixing, or at least some forming. Let me see here. I'm gonna make sure my hands, I've already washed them once, but I'm just gonna make sure they are super clean. So let's take a look at this dough that has been rising for about an hour. Um, and that's what I was guessing it would need to rise for. One thing I was reading, I was doing a lot of reading of some of these recipes, and I was talking about if it rises longer, um, it can get a little bit off tasting and it can affect the texture. So, oh my goodness. So again, I'm so sorry that I didn't do, th do this all in front of you, but one of the things you're looking for is for your dough to double in size. And it has. So let me give you a show to this. Let me take this off because this will reflect and it looks beautiful. Super excited. Oh, and it smells so good. So let me show that to you. So that has doubled in size from what I mixed just about an hour ago. Oh, it smells so good. So Dia said he has done pretzel bagels and butters. Ooh, I love it. And you know what's next on my lip list is I want to do these overnight bagels. Um, in fact, what I did want to mention um, with the recipe is I actually, there was this big thing of whether I should use bread flour or not. So I did a lot of research on it. Um, there were recipes that said you didn't need the bread flour, which in the end, if it's going to prevent you from making, you know, these pretzels, just use your flour, right? Like, my goodness, like, let's just, but I had wanted to buy the bread flour because the overnight bagel recipe that I want to be making sometime soon in the next month called for bread flour. So I'm like, I'm going to get it. And the thing with bread flour is, I believe from what I read about it, is it's a better flour for de developing those glutens. And that's what I really want for this recipe specifically, because I want that chewiness, I want that density. So um, so yeah, so I'm super excited about this. So now what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be dividing this dough into 16 pieces. So that'll make 16 pretzels. So this much will make 16 pretzels. Also in the meantime, I got together and boiled some water. I actually boiled more than six cups of water and they said to add baking soda to that. So I'm gonna take a look at my water that was boiling. Woo! Yes. Let me get that boiling back. Nope. I was trying to get my camera here to work um, and it's really not cooperating. Let me just make sure. Let me just take a little peek. Nope, you see that? It does not want to co cooperate. It's still searching. So I was able to get that to work last time. This time, not so much. Um, but what I can do is even, I'll get my mitts out. I can bring this, this huge cast iron um, pot over here to at least show you a little bit um, of what's going on so you can see it better. You want me to do that? Well, no, it's not, not time to do that yet, but like at, at the point. So, um, so let me get some baking soda because I want to put that in there. And I'm going to need two tablespoons of baking soda. So let me grab that. my measure. I realized I forgot to put any shoes on. It's been that kind of morning. So Diaz says hello, Andy. Oh, 
Um, so DS also says, um, when I make traditional bagels, I usually make a cheers, a cheese beer sauce to dip. Yes, we have a cheese sauce, um, that we are using today. I'm not making it on stream today, but we are going to be using that. Um, I do think that is a delicious way to enjoy your pretzels today. When we try the pretzels, we're going to just be using mustard. Um, but certainly, you know, you can make a honey mustard, uh, there's so many different kinds of mustards you could use to enjoy it, but I love a cheese dip. I think that is a great way. So right now I want to, I have my baking soda. I want to add two tablespoons to my water here. Now I'm pretty sure that I've, oopsie, there we go. I'm pretty sure that I have, um, more than six cups of water. So I might just add a little bit more. Ooh. A little simmering there. So I'm pretty sure I have more than that. And I from I believe that ooh, I believe that the baking soda in the water from my Bavarian pretzel recipe helps it brown. Um, kind of help because I we just actually uh, basted some baking soda water on top of our pretzels when we made the Bavarian types. Also, I have my salt for later. Um, from the Boise Salt Company in Idaho. So thank you very much for sending me the salt. Um, you could just use kosher salt, sea salt. You don't have to have the special pretzel salt, but I really wanted that, that authentic pretzel look. Oh, you meant pretzels, not bagels. Gotcha. Yes, oh, I see. Okay. And DS also said I, I use cheese beer sauce with, gotcha, yes, with pretzels, not bagels. Yeah, though, you know what? Dipping a bagel in the cheese beer sauce isn't going to be that bad either, right? <laughs> so, all right. So let's get this divided. I'm going to get my little dough divider. Now, you don't need a dough divider. You could just use a knife. But I've always found this helpful. And I want to make sure my clean counter is very dry because I'm going to be getting a little bit I'm not sure how sticky this dough will be, so I want to bring a little bit of flour just in case. Grab that. So DS, uh, what are your plans today? Are you watching the big game? Do you do that just uh, with you and your wife, or do you guys get together with friends? And do you have any special food planned for, for the big game? So I am not, this is not the bread flour actually. I used bread flour, this is just my regular flour and I'm just gonna use it. Um, let me feel the dough, oh that dough feels nice. So look at this, the dough is super soft. There's no stickiness, it's just what I want. Okay, so let me get this. I'm gonna just lightly flour it because I don't want it to start sticking. To there. So I'm gonna just dump this out. Yes, yeah, so what are you guys having for this? So I am, What's that? Pretzels. We are having pretzels. We're having pretzels and cheese sauce. And we are all, I also have marinating. In fact, I'll show you all in a second. I have marinating some wings that I'm gonna be live streaming um, in a couple weeks on a Wednesday wing night. I actually will, so I'm gonna just divvy this up into 16 portions right now. Um, so I'm actually, not doing it in my air fryer, which is, I know I've been doing all my wings in my air fryer, but these are ones that from a place um, locally, well, it, it was local, but it's, it's, a, it's a chain called Anthony's Coal Fire Kitchen, or Coal Fire Pizza, I think. And they have these rosemary coal fire roasted wings that are just amazing. So I've got four pieces, so I'm just gonna get this into four more pieces. Just eyeball it to make it about half and their wings their rosemary garlic lemon and you know as much as I love wings in all shapes and forms it's really nice that they're just not as um, they're not as heavy because they're roasted and they have all the flavor like they are not lacking in any flavor so I'm just putting these dough pieces over here because we're rolling them into um, you know, long strips to make our pretzels. Um, and then my sister is coming over with my brother-in-law and she's bringing these bourbon meatballs. I don't know if you've had any of those before that are absolutely addictive. And she's also bringing a vegetable crudite platter because you know, just so we get our veggies amidst all this yummy, you know, splurge food. 
and then my son and his wife are coming over and they're I think they're bringing buffalo uh, chicken dip and maybe something sweet so I think we'll be taken care of so Dia says watching my wife is making her world-renowned chili oh chili cheese nachos that sounds amazing that sounds awesome so one thing I'm gonna do is I want to get myself a platter to kind of put all this stuff on so one of the things I like to use is this one lid there'll be noise sorry about that this lid oh my goodness um, this is a lid to one of those quarter sheet uh, cookie sheet trays quarter quarter sheet pan or whatever they're called or I guess it's a half sheet pan and um, I'm just gonna line it with some parchment paper to help again with the non-sticking. There we go. So that I can bring these over to boil. Well, that sounds delightful and it sounds delicious. That sounds so good. Pretzels are fun to make. Fresh, oh my gosh, homemade is even better. I cannot wait to have the warm pretzel. So anyways, back to the recipe. Let me just see if they had a a length that you would like to make the logs. Now they just say roll each piece into a log and shape the logs into pretzels, okay? And then we're gonna boil them in the water four at a time and cook for a minute. And then we're gonna transfer them to a lightly greased baking sheet. So I'm, I'm gonna get that baking sheet ready before I start rolling because I know that that is gonna be, I'm gonna be thankful I did that. So let me get that ready. Let me check on my water. Oh, it is boiling. So I'm gonna turn it down. Let that just simmer. Um, get my baking sheet. And I'm going to use my silk pad. Because then I don't have to worry. I think that's what I'm going to do. You could lightly grease it, but I'm just going to use my silk pad. And this is just that silicon material so they won't stick. There we go. And since they're going to be 16, I think I'm going to need two of them so they can be spaced well. Let me see. Oh, let me get one more. Let's see. Always noisy in the Philly Philly kitchen. Lots of clatter. Okay, so we make got... Sure you, make sure you comment on the big hole in there thing because some people might not count. Oh, and if anyone is noticing our lovely hole and you've never been to my stream, we had a new stove put in and um, our drawer didn't fit because of, it's a long story, but we're waiting for our drawer to get fixed so that we can, we can put our drawer back in because we desperately need it. All right, so now I'm just going to take these pretzels or these uh, dough pieces and I'm just gonna roll them out. So, you know, <laughs> you kind of love a recipe that doesn't give you a lot of, a lot of uh, direction. So you're kind of just going with it. So I'm gonna, I just want them long enough that I don't want it to be, I just wanna get a good pretzel shape out of this. Now in Philly, part of what makes the Philly pretzels iconic is the way they're made, um, and I think machines actually make them, and they're put together and smushed together. I cannot replicate that here in my home kitchen. So, so that's not gonna happen. So I'm just gonna have your, your typical pretzel shape. Okay, so I'm gonna take that, I'm gonna twist, and that's still, I, I would like this longer, so I'm going to do this longer. So you can make little squatty pretzels if you want, but I really do want to try to get a little bit of, there we go, at least a little bit of air there. That'll have to do. Okay, so what I did was once you take your ends together, you twist them. Um, around each other and then you smooth them against the bottom to make that iconic pretzel shape. I'm going to put my pretzel here and get them rolled out. So DS, are you and your wife um, just watching the game solo with each other or because uh, a lot of times actually that's what Hubs and I do. We just kind of watch the game by ourselves but being that this one was such a, a special one with um, you know having Philly in it, we, it was nice to have some family come and enjoy it together. 
But I think Andy would say that one of the things he likes about watching the football game by ourselves is he really likes to watch the game. <laughs> so he finds that if you go to a party, no one's really watching the game. And, and even if it's teams, you know, that are not from our town, he really wants to kind of see what's going on in the game. Everybody can come over, they're just not allowed to talk. Yeah, so people can come over, they just can't chat. At least not chat with the host. Okay, so this is my second pretzel. So just rolled out and I'm kind of stretching a little bit to try to make sure I keep some of that, that distance. And I'm just making these and rolling these out. Again, I, I feel like so much of cooking can be like Play-Doh, right? And I'm, you know what I'm gonna do? I actually, I'm gonna just put, I just don't want this to dry out. I know I'm doing it pretty quick. So I'm just going to get, let me get a towel to put over top of this. It's actually a clean towel, that just is a stain that didn't come out. All right, so getting his rolling. It's kind of therapeutic and actually for how stressed I was before the stream because of a couple things glitching, um, it's relaxing. So this is what I love about cooking. And hopefully you can find something you love with that. All right, there we go. So anxious to see what the um, what the commercials are gonna be this year. Those are always fun to see. How interesting, if there's really funny ones, um, if there's any cutting edge ones. We always do a rating of like, which ones we thought were hits, which ones we thought were kind of misses, or ho-hum. So anxious to see those. No company, Adia says, no company, just us. We want a relaxing weekend together. That sounds divine. Yes, and we're keeping it small now. Um, my youngest, it's his birthday today, so shout out to my, the one that you've seen on these streams a lot, shout out to Maddie for a happy birthday today. Um, but he is going to a Super Bowl party that my niece is having in the city, so he will not be joining us. And we're going to actually, my, both my boys have birthdays near each other, so we're going to be joining, we're going to be all getting together next weekend to, you know, kind of celebrate birthdays, enjoy a little food, um, and do it together, because they're their birthdays are actually, they're like a little over two weeks apart or something. It was something crazy, crazy like that. Our okay. Young, our youngest has not been responding to texts, so. He went out with friends last night and he's, he's in his 20s, so um, oh, his mid-20s. Oh, nice. So I'm, I'm pretty he's sure he's, <laughs> he's <doing laughs> thank you, Diaz. Yes, happy birthday to Matt. I'm a little worried that he's maybe feeling a little bit. My last text was, hey, you okay? <laughs> <laughs> and we've sent multiple birthday texts. I've got, I've got crickets. Hopefully he's not nursing too bad a, um, a hangover. I do not miss those days. <laughs> All righty. So we've got four pretzels made. All right. And we're going to be making 16 total. And you can see I'm doing a mixture of kind of rolling and pulling. There we go. And then I do a little stretching just to kind of create a little bit more space. Um, there we go. So I'm going to be, we're going to be uh, boiling four of these at a time, which actually I'm glad I used. So one of the reasons I chose that pot was because it's just wider. So I liked that idea very much of um, giving a little more space so I could do four at a time. So depending upon what you have at home, you could, if you don't have anything that's wider, like I probably would be up for trying one of those really big um, saute pans that have a pretty decent side up there. If you didn't have anything like this, um, you could try that and see it just, if you just could get the space, otherwise you might wanna think about like maybe two pots to, you know, get enough room for those pretzels not to stick to each other. All right, let me get two more. There we go. It just seems like this season with the football has been longer than usual. And I do think it has been at least date wise because I don't recall there ever being a Super Bowl this late. 
It just seems very late. There we go. So, DS, because I know you guys are in New York City, is there anything that is more popular in New York City for Super Bowl parties? You know, like, for instance, when we lived in Cincinnati, something that you would often see in Super Bowl, par Super Bowl parties um, was Cincinnati chili. And there was this Cincinnati chili dip where they would use Cincinnati chili. Well, actually, they first spread cream cheese at the bottom of like a, a shallow but wide tray. It could be rectangular or circular. And then they um, poured Cincinnati chili over top of it. And then they topped with a ton of shredded cheddar cheese. And you put it in the oven at a high temperature just till it got bubbly. And you would dip um, some sort of kind of corn chip or tortilla chip in it. And it was phenomenal. Um, but you know, it's Cincinnati chili, which is a little bit different taste. So that was kind of like a something you would definitely see at Super Bowl parties in the Cincinnati area. So I didn't know if, if in New York, if there was anything that you would see typically, you know, at a New York, I know you guys like to watch it by yourself, but I just didn't know if there was like a snack food like that that was more typical. Because for Philly, I do think cheesesteaks, hoagies, I bet you are gonna be at a lot of these parties. We've not even talked about hoagies much on stream, um, but cheesesteaks, hoagies, pretzels, like those are a lot of things you're gonna be seeing. Okay, so I'm going to, I'm going to just transfer this here, one second. I'm going to put this here to wait. There we go. Just so I have room for this. And they're not really being sticky, so I'm just going to put these straight on on this, I think they'll be okay. And then these will be the ones I think that I'll boil first. And those can sit. There we go. And I don't, you know, it's funny, um, because both Hubs and I used to live near the Cleveland area. And do you remember there being a certain kind of food when we lived up in the Cleveland area that was common? Like, I, I can't remember that. Oh, and um, DS says, New York City is such a melting pot. Yeah. So no, however, wings and pizza are very popular there. And I would say that would be the same for Cleveland area. I don't remember there being a certain kind of food. Yeah, I don't remember. Yeah, I, don't really I agree. Although, I grew up in a very Italian mm -hmm. section, so there was a fair amount of Italian food. Sure. I remember those parties, but I, I think that was just, I, I, yeah, that was just, Right. One thing I'm noticing, because I've worked with, I've not worked with all kinds of dough, but I've worked with quite a bit of different kinds of dough. This is a really easy dough to work with. And so I think the key was adding enough flour, um, you know, when I initially made it so that it was not super sticky. Um, and then I kneaded it additionally with some flour so that it was a soft dough. And so it, you know, you can see I'm not needing, I put a little flour just to make sure my little dough pieces didn't stick, but it's really quite easy to work with. It's not too tender that it's falling apart. And this is all what we want because this is showing that, look, that, that those glutens have developed. And that is what we're gonna be enjoying as far as a chewy uh, pretzel. Whoopsie, speaking of glutens developing, that one didn't wanna leave its partner. Um, so I'm really pleased with the dough so far. So I'm anxious to see how these turn out and how they taste. Oh, and speaking of which, I need to get my um, I need to get in my oven preheated. So let me just take a quick peek. Let's see here, 450, 12 to 15 minutes. And I am going to do um, I'm going to use my convection because I know that it really creates a great air source, and that's how bakeries and companies they usually have convection ovens. So I'm going to put it at 425. I'm also going to take out my pizza stone because I don't want that in the way. You always do convection lower? Yes, 25 degrees lower is convection. So let me get it going. Convection, 425. There we go. So that's all ready because it does say 450. Yep. OK, so let me get this one going. And Diaz says, 
the um, Palatine Germans, later known as the Pennsylvania Dutch, brought pretzels to America in 1710. They were originally called Bretzel. I did not know that. Bretzel? Bretzel. Yeah. I knew that I knew they came from Pets, Pennsylvania Dutch, but I did not know they were named pretzel. I mean bretzel. Very interesting. And then DLS also said the first commercial pretzel bakery was established in the town of Lidditz, Pennsylvania, which we've been to, um, by Julius Sturgis in 1861. The hard pretzel has its beginnings in Pennsylvania. That I knew. Yeah, Lidditz is right outside of Lancaster. Yeah, and we're not far. Well, how far is Lancaster from Philly, you think? Hour and a half, two hours. Hour and a half, two hours. So not bad. Of course, I will tell you in pretzel, I my favorite part is always that middle part. I'm, where's your favorite part of the pretzel, by the way, Hubs? I don't have it. You don't have a favorite part? I like all. I always like the doughy part. Like to me, it's all about the doughiness, which is one of the things I like about the Philadelphia pretzels. Um, like as a young girl, I was not a big hard pretzel fan. In fact, I would say you're a huge pretzel aficionado. Yes. I'm not so much. Like in general. Like it's not that I don't, I don't like them. I'm not saying that. But like I'm much more the salty chip, um, whether it's tortilla or potato, right? Then but a we, soft pretzel. Mm. And as we know, some pretzels affect me. Yeah. So he, <laughs> Andy... Andy has this condition where he could be just eating pretzels. He loves pretzels. When I tell you he eats them so much, like through our marriage, he's just a pretzel guy. I always make sure I have pretzels in the house for him. And he will all of a sudden get a little queasy of pretzel, which is so interesting. Um, and you don't as know I'm why. Eating. As you're eating them. And then he has to stop. Do you know when that first happened? I don't know. It's been probably 10 years, and, and I mean, I... Oh, so I it didn't happen when you were little? No. Okay. No, no. I mean, I, I get really queasy. Like, I like feel, all of a sudden. Like, I feel like Zero I'm to upset. 60. Yeah. I mean, I'm a pretzel. Like instant, and then I have to drink something carbonated. And then, <laughs> <laughs> it's the weirdest thing. It's like, it's like pregnant woman syndrome oh, in, in so the matter strange. of two seconds. And then, because it's true, the carbonated thing. Yeah, I think that's just, really it's interesting. It's the weirdest thing. I just don't know why. I'm just... So, um, Dia said there's great food, food culture in Pennsylvania. I agree. I think, I think there's, you know, and I know that New York is a huge melting pot, but one of the things I love about Philly is while we have a huge Italian influence in here, there's also so many other influences, and especially as the years have gone, and different communities have grown. It'll never catch um, New York, but it'll be. Yeah. New York is just best. Well, Chinatown so, is is yeah. phenomenal. But um, New York is just some of the best. Oh yeah, and so big, yeah, like New York size wise. I don't know if we mentioned this the last stream, DS, but when we were in New York the other weekend, it just it just it so humbles us into realizing how. How big it is! Like I always forget. I mean, I know, and then you're there. You're like, yeah, it's just such a bigger city. Um, it's just, it's. I love New York. I I love all the different neighborhoods. I love all the different foods. I I, I you know honestly, I just places. I think it's such a blessing to have different foods to share and try. Um, I mean, you know, my family has a big German heritage, and I love the foods. You know that my grandma used to make um but i am glad to know and try other uh foods from different other backgrounds and nationalities i think that's a gift and i think food is what kind of brings us all together you know and the whole sitting around the table breaking bread is just like just like to me one of the most basic ways to be kind and friendly to each other you know and to share um how you grew up and what what you know and what is special to you i just think that's i think sharing a food is just a wonderful human experience all right so i have just two more pretzels now these these two last pieces were quite the dough is quite a bit smaller so these are going to be definitely a little bit smaller because i don't really want them to get too thin so i think these are just going to be little baby pet pretzels yeah, definitely smaller. But you can just see how I'm pulling this, how elastic this is. And to me, it just shows me how much that gluten was developed. All right, last baby pretzel. This one has just a tad more dough than the one I just made. 
So if you're just joining us, we are making Philly soft pretzels today. Um, before the stream, I did mix the dough. Um, I followed the link down below in the description and uh, mixed the dough and got it kneaded and set in a warm place, covered, so it could double in size. And now we've divided the dough into 16 pieces and we are getting ready to dip it in some boiling water that has some baking powder or baking soda, sorry, added to it. And that will help in the browning process. And the boiling helps with the bagely, chewy, doughy texture that we are desiring. All right, so yes, there. I know Shelby. Oh, Shelby got a bath yesterday. She did. We were on her list. She, while she does enjoy going into the lake when we go up to Lake Lompopac, she does not at all like giving baths. And as her, as she's gotten so old, we used to take her places to get baths, but she's just she's old and she's a bit frail, and so we have found that it's just easier to bathe her in the shower. And Andy takes that on, which I'm grateful for. But um. She, even though she doesn't like it, I think she appreciates not being lugged away somewhere with a stranger. So yeah, so she smells lovely. She got her nails trimmed. She's ready to go. All right, so friends, we have made, these are eight, um, and we have our other eight over there. Let me check my water, make sure it's boiling. And it is. And let me just do one more check to see if I can get my camera working. Let me just try one more time. Let's just see here. All right. Let's see. So we have this. So what I tried last time was I tried plugging it in directly. Oh, it's working. <gasps> it's working. Okay. It's working remotely. So I'm going to plug her in. Oh, I'm so excited. Let me show you what we've done here. Thank you to the stream gods that just helped make this happen. There we go. Okay, let me get it. Let me get this figured a little bit. We don't have to lug it over, babe. So. Good. All right. So there is our boiling water. I want to turn this up just a little bit because once I took the lid off, it went down. So um, what we're going to do is we are going to put four pretzels in a time into the boiling water and cooking for one minute. So, babe, is there any way you would mind timing um, the minute? So when I say go, if you could do that, that would be wonderful. I know, I'm gonna get, let me have this get back to the boil. So I'm gonna do these first just because all right, I'm ready. you're ready. Okay, I'll let you know when I get them all in. Put this here. Actually, no, because I'll put those on. And I'm feeling like, I'm feeling like it doesn't say, but I feel like I'm gonna need to dry these pretzels. So I'm just gonna put a plate with some paper towels, just so. Is that gonna stick? Oh, well, if I do a regular towel, it won't stick. I'll use this, because I used this already. This is my bread towel. You know, it's, that'll be fine to this because it's already gonna be boiled in. I'm gonna use this towel. That's a good, I'm not gonna use paper towels. I'm gonna use this. Just to dab before I put them on the sheet. I can hear it boiling. So there we go. And I'm going to drop them in. Well, it's not really a rolling boil yet, so let's just give it a second. So we'll put them in four at a time, cook them for a minute, and then I'm going to dab them quickly on the bread, on the um, towel and then put them on the sheet. And once we have um, them all, I'll do the next four because I want to bake them all at the same time. So that's my plan to bake them. Okay. My apologies to anyone besides DS and Ruby for the small lag in here. Um, I hope it doesn't get worse. And... Uh, Thank you. Thank you for understanding. So I'm gonna get these in, the um, the water's boiling. You ready to put a minute? Don't do the minute yet. Wait till I get them all in, okay, babe? Okay. Okay. I'm ready. Okay. One, two, three. Look at them floating. Four. It's so funny because they go down. And you, did you go? No, 
Go, go, on, go, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Look at them. You said don't do it no. Look at them. All right, I'm going to use this to get them out. Look at those little cuties. So they sank, and, and then they flipped over. I'm going to flip that one over. They sank, and they, they came up. That is so cool. Isn't that yeah, cool? That is pretty cool. Very cool. Sorry. It doesn't I, uh, say anything about it doesn't say anything about flipping, so I just flipped the one over because it was upside down. Oh, and it's better now? Good. So let them let me know when the minute's up. Yes, what do you think? Should I flip them? Like or is it probably just fine? I guess I don't flip gnocchi. Like when I cook gnocchi, they just, when they float, they float. You can, you can flip it. Okay, minute. Minute? Minute. Okay. Well, that one's a beauty. That's a little baby. <laughs> All right, let me get the, the next ones in. There we go. This is fun. I will say, I'm enjoying this very much. The Andy joke makes, the, oh, yeah? Andy makes his cameo. <laughs> it's only, I was at the gym and I- Oh, time it, time it. Oh, wait, wait, oh. Time it. Wait. Okay. And so now I'm going to put these ones that we just boiled, I'm gonna put them on here on the Silpat. Gorgeous. Sweetie, it's stuck. Sweetie, it's fine. That's why I did that. Oh my gosh. <laughs> what am I going to do with him? What am I going to do with him? It is Valentine's Day, so I'll be nice. You can start. Be nice. What's up, Valentine's Day? Yeah. Soon. Yeah. It's Valentine's soon. You can actually start to smell them. I know. They smell really good. Well, so, oh, I'm going to get I'm going to get the egg out because we are going to have an egg glaze um, before we put the salt on. So let me go. Do that, let me know when the timer goes off. Okay. I can stop and get my salt ready. Put it in a bowl. I'll make it easier. About 10 seconds. Okay, get ready. Good. All right. Very cool. So, you know, I guess for anyone nervous, having worked with um, different doughs before, I just think this is just a really easy dough to work with. So super pleased, super pleased with this dough. So don't be afraid. Even though there wasn't a lot of direction on the recipe thing, if you, at least not that I'm an expert or anything, but if you at least watch the video, I think that together, you will be able to get these pretzels off and running. So I'm gonna just pause a second before I put those in. I just wanna get my egg out for my egg wash. In a minute I will, I'll let you know when I... Okay. Get my egg wash. So the egg wash is just a beaten egg with some water, and that's gonna help you know, first of all, to make the top super glossy. Um, so I'm gonna put the salt in here, but it also will help the salt stick, which is good. Get this open, and the salt will be easier to manage in a dish like that. All right, so I'm gonna get the next ones in, then I'll get this cracked and um, mixed with a tablespoon of water. All right, so I'll let you know, sweetie, okay? Okay. So I'm going to crack this egg and add a tablespoon of water. I'll use my baking soda 
tablespoon thing and just get some regular water in there. Get that going. Okay, get a tablespoon of water. Whoops. There we go. Excellent. All right. And I'm going to get this whisked up. And I'm going to get a little bit of a... Um, uh, is that the one I want to use? Yeah, that'll be fine. Just a little thing that I can baste it on. There we go. Get this whisked. How are we doing on time? Ten seconds. Ten seconds. Okay. I'll go over there. It looks so pretty. Uh, Done? Yep. I am so pleased. I I needed I needed the, I needed the stream, babe. I needed one that was just like you needed one that worked. I needed well. one that worked well. Well, I know being a cook, you definitely have situations that occur that humble you. It's just nice to have a win sometimes, right, friends? Okay. Put this off real quick. There we go. Put those in. I'm going to take these off. There we go. Move that over a little bit. There we go. These are so pretty. All right. Okay. Get these last ones in. Yeah. Not yet. I'll tell soon. I'll let you know. In just a second. Okay. You can start. All right. I'm going to get this whisked up. For our egg wash. Okay, there we go. That's all mixed. That's it to go. Let me put this away. All right, so friends, if you're just joining us, we are at the, in the latter end of our pretzel making. Um, we're in the boiling phase, and soon we're gonna be um, do, giving them an egg wash and sprinkling that pretzel salt on there. How much time left, babe? It's funny, it's 10 seconds. It's oh, funny. I get them every, every time. time. Yeah, every time you ask, it's 10 seconds. Isn't that funny? I'm good. I'm good? Yep. All right, that's a biggie. That one's a little chubby. Okay, Let's turn this off. And we don't need that anymore, so I'm gonna move that. Just a sec. Camera scene. There we go. And put these down. Wow. Gosh, these look good. They smell so good. Angie's right. They you just they yeah, sm really they good. smell so pretzely. I'm getting hungry, and of course I haven't had lunch, so that wouldn't be another reason I'm hungry. Um, but boy, these are going to make a good lunch. All right, so I'm actually going to do the first ones. Not that it matters, but I'm going to actually I can put them both all here. So here we go. Here's our lovely boiled pretzels ready for their little egg wash. So I'm just going to do one row at a time. So I'm going to do a little wash. And then I'm going to do a little sprinkle. I'm not supposed to be time right? No, we're good. I'm going to do a little sprinkle. There we go. This is nice salt. I'm very happy with the salt. To me, to me you got to have some salt. On the pretzels i just think i mean obviously if, if you can't have salt so don't let that stop you because they're still going to be delicious but to me i love that crunchy salt okay there we go nice oh let me move that guy over 
you moved a little bit. So you can see even with this, you could just grease your sheet, but if you have any of these silicon mats, they make it really nice so you don't have to worry about, one second, so you don't have to worry about them sticking. I love these for cookies, for anything that I just need to make sure, you know, doesn't stick. A little too much egg there. And then we're gonna do, let me just rinse my hands before I put back in the salt again. Okay, very nice. Awesome. All right, first one, let's get these done. Oh, thank you, DS. They did, they've come out, well, I'm, very, I'm really, I'm really excited. I'm, I'm looking forward to the final, you know, once they bake and see how that goes. But you put them all in at the same time? Yes. How long do they have to bake? Um, well, regular t at a regular oven, it's 12 to 15. Um, but it'll be a little bit quicker, so it'll be, it could be like 10 to 12, but I just, you know, have to watch them. Convection, things cook a little quicker, uh, which is great for streaming so that things get done a little faster. Oh, I kind of did the wrong way. We'll do those four. I didn't do it in a row that time. Now, sadly, my, my sister's gluten-free, so she will not be able to enjoy the pretzels. Um, and by the way, if you wanted to keep these vegan, in fact, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep this one vegan um, right here. If you want to keep them vegan uh, for my niece, um, just don't do the egg wash. And you can just wet it with a little bit of water. And then, so let me just get that. Let me first get these, oh my goodness. Get my hands rinsed. So if you didn't want to be, have to be vegan, or you could use an egg substitute, um, but you could just use a little bit of water. It's just the moisture also that helps. So this one here is gonna be vegan. So let me just get a little moisture. Just gonna do a little dab, a little moisture going. There we go. That'll help it. Okay, all right, and that way my niece can enjoy that. All righty, so these are gonna go in for, I don't know, 10 to 13 minutes, so we'll just have to keep an eye on them and see. I have them going in convection at 425. See, they're dressed and ready to go. Let me set the timer. So I'm gonna set it for 10 minutes just so I make sure I check. Um, just make sure, let me get a lid for this salt. Actually, you know what, I'm gonna put the salt back in the bag. So I was mentioning to you, um, DS and Ruby, that I made these wings, um, or got them marinating, uh, and we'll be cooking them off as it gets closer. They roast at a pretty high heat. I think it's about as high as you can get it. Um, you know, 475 to 500. No, 475 to 500. Um, so that you want to get some char, just like if it was a, you know, a, a fire oven, a, you know, because it's coal-fired uh, pizza. But these are them. And again, I'll be doing these at a future stream. Um, so these have been marinating. Oh, you want to get a good 24-hour marinade with these. And in here are all the chicken wings. I'm going to flip them, actually. And you can see some of the rosemary in there. Um, lemon juice, olive oil, uh, gar you put whole garlic cloves in there, which helps will appreciate. So you don't have little garlic pieces, it's just the garlic in the marinade that helps very much flavor them well, um, and then salt and pepper. So then I'll be putting these, I'll be drying off some of the marinade, you know, so that they can crisp up uh, before I put them in my convection oven at pretty much one of the highest temperatures I can get. Um, and then just let them roast away till they're done. So super excited for these. And these are traditionally served with at the restaurant with caramelized onions and with focaccia bread, which is actually, it's, it is just, they are so good at the restaurant and with the caramelized onions and focaccia, it's just wonderful. Tonight, because of all the other food we're having, 
we're not doing that. But um, but I, I can you know talk about that when we do the stream in a couple of weeks. So these are the rosemary wings, rosemary garlic. So that's for later for the Super Bowl. All right, so let me tidy up a little bit while they're cooking. So DS says, I'm curious, what's the one thing you're afraid to make that one day you will? Huh. Well, I will tell you what, so one of the things I love about this stream, you, first of all, DS, I've got to compliment you. I've told this to Hubs many times. You do ask the best questions and I love your questions. I really enjoy them because they make me think um, and they're just really interesting. So the one, I've done a couple of them um, already. So one of the things that my grandma used to make that really intimidated me was this, it was called seven year cake. And really it's a pineapple tort. Um, and I did that this summer. And that was kind of a monkey in my back because first of all, it was a beloved dish that my grandma used to make. And I felt very intimidated by it um, because it was, it looked like something you'd get at a pastry shop. And I thought, oh my goodness, like I've made a lot of stuff, but nothing that fancy. Um, and what I will tell you is that when you follow the recipe, kind of just go step by step, it's really amazing how it all comes together. I was so pleased with the result. And you could kick yourself kind of, because you're like, what took me so long to make that? So that was one thing. And they, and a lot of these tend to be my grandma's dishes, Look at my rings. Because the other one was my grandma's Anna's cookies uh, that I made this uh, late fall. And those were just a little different because they cured. They actually sat out overnight for like 12 hours before you bake them. And again, I was worried they weren't going to come out. And so the stream has been great because it's really challenged me to face my fears. Um, and then the, la the other thing I haven't yet made of my grandma's that I'm actually, it was funny because I'm thinking about doing it for March um, because in March it'll be a year streaming, which I can't believe the year is coming up. And in fact, yes, I have a question for you and Ruby um, in a second. But what I, I do think I'm going to do is my mom, my grandma was known for the stuff that she called kookin, but really was like a pecan sticky roll. Remember I told you about that, Andy? Kuchen. Kuchen, it was C-U-C-H-E-N, which doesn't really mean, when you look up the meaning of kuchen, it's really not... Like it doesn't really match with what she called kuchen, but it's what she called it. So that's like what I call it. But it was kind of like a sticky, a pecan sticky roll that she was also known for bringing, you know, she'd bring one when she came over, like as kind of a hostess gift. She just made them and passed them around to everyone. They were so delicious. So that's something I still want to make. Um, as far as other, other things, I'm trying to think. Because a lot of it's been my grandma stuff. So I've got, I'm sure I know there's other things, but I just haven't. Oh, and then the other one was the sticky, um, the crispy rice. That the thing that we've been having at so many restaurants, the sushi, it's this crispy sushi rice that's deep fried. And then you put like a, um, a spicy tuna or spicy salmon on it. And I feel, so I feel like I faced a lot of my fears, but so I know he, there's more out there. Yeah, but he asked, is there anything that you still have a fear of? Yeah, that's I know I have to I have to I have to think because I don't know but I but I'm not afraid to face my fears oh I just said the kuchen cookie. yeah my grandma's kuchen so that's one that I I want to do in March grandma but the no we would never do that grandma's the sweetest woman I ever knew so but I will I have a question to yes um you said, wait, you said, I, I'm fine when I'm afraid to make something, then I make it and it comes out great. Yes. And I do think it's so important to face your fears. And again, what I think was great about the stream is once I put it out there, like those Anna's cookies, once I put it out there, it was like, you can't turn back. Now, of course, one of the things that messed up my Anna's cookies was it, we had this warm humid spell. So, and I know you can't make them during that kind of weather. So I did have to wait, but I, when I put it out there that I'm going to make something, I will make it whether it fails or, or whether it's wonderful or flops. Like I will, I will go for it. So I will have to think besides my grandma's cooking what the next thing is. But I have a question for you and Ruby. So in, I think it's March 5th will be one year, my YouTube anniversary of when I did my first stream. So I already know what I'm going to do with that stream. I'm actually going to do because I started off streaming with a, um, um, Oh my goodness, the uh, halush key. So I, because of the war that had just started in Ukraine, I wanted to do, I just wanted to kind of 
pay homage to that country and all that they were going through. And of course, the war is still going on. So I feel like I'd like to revisit that because it's a year would have liked to have known that that war had stopped, but it hasn't. So um, I would like to do another Ukrainian dish. And I'm right now trying to figure out what that'll be. But the other thing that I am wanting to um, goal that I have is to get to 500 subscribers. So um, this past week, I surpassed 400 subscribers. So thank you, everyone. I appreciate that. And it humbles me more than you'll ever know. But I would like to get to 500. That's my next big one. Um, and so I want to do something special when I get to 500. And I got that idea from my son who streams. He's a gaming streamer. And so I do want to do some things like to kind of celebrate that, but I don't know, I don't know. Like, do you guys have any ideas of something to celebrate once I get 500 subscribers? Like I could say that I will stream, you know, within five days following that and do such and such. So I didn't know if you had ideas of what I could do. So let me know. I'm gonna check on the pretzels while you're thinking about it. And I can see that they are looking so beautiful and brown. They're not yet ready yet. They're too light. We want a darker brown, but I'm so excited. Oh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get out some mustard because we will be using that when we taste them. Oh, and we are, we do not have any shortage of mustard. I'm just getting out a few because I'm not, Dijon is not something I typically do on my pretzels. Um, so let's see here. Lots of great options. I left about four mustards still in my fridge because I'm a bit of a condiment, um, a condiment hoarder. But uh, so we've just got your traditional yellow, which I, I gotta say, you can never go wrong with traditional yellow mustard. And then this is a, just a spicy brown mustard. That's another great mustard, just for like pretzels, right? Like a spicy brown mustard. And now this is one that you had had the other day. You're like, this is really good. This is a Creole mustard. So again, it's kind of like a take on a spicy brown, but just a little bit different. And then this is a honey. Oh my goodness, the honey's making it sticky. A honey mustard. Nothing wrong with the honey mustard. So we've got that too. So that is yummy. So that those are the ones I think that will... Is there any mustard you want to make sure that's here when we taste them, babe? I will have mine without mustard. Oh, I will first taste it without mustard, but then, okay. So let me get on our plate. You ready to burn your tongue when that happens? Yeah. So, um, DS said, are you asking what you should make as far as food's concerned or what you should do to celebrate 500? So I, I, I kind of both is what I'm asking because so for instance, when my son got to 500, I think he did a five hour stream, right? I think that was, that was a thousand. Oh, he did a 10 hour stream. Well, I will tell you one day when, if I get to 1000, I'm not doing a 10 hour stream <laughs> because that like is exhausting to me. But I was thinking about a five hour stream. Um, that was one of the ideas I was throwing around and I'll tell you like what my idea was in just a second. Let me just check on them. Sounds like a lot. So, oh, these look beautiful. They need more, but I'm gonna spin them. I know with convection, you often don't need to do this, but I wanna make sure they evenly brown. So I am turning them and let's see. Definitely need two minutes, um, but maybe even a little more. I just wanna make sure that that real golden brown with pretzels, like they shouldn't, especially Philly pretzels, shouldn't be light. There might be little light spots, but they should be definitely brown. So one of the ideas I was having, um, DS was doing a five hour stream to celebrate 500 subscribers. And the stream would be super casual, but I what I would do is I would actually um, try to get ideas of what people would like to, what foods people would like to see cooked, like kind of reach out to, my Twitter foodies um, and also posted on my community um, for, you know, kind of food ideas. But also I thought what I'd like to do is have like a question answer part two uh, where I could just, you know, I it'll because it'll happen after I've been on a year. So like, is there anything, you know, that people want to know about me as a cook? 
um, as someone who lives in Philadelphia, you know, those kinds of things. So just kind of like in the middle of it, have it be like do cooking at the beginning, have there be like a little bit get to know you thing in the middle and then cooking at the end. So that's kind of one of the things I was thinking of. And also I was thinking of things, the fun things like now, now <laughs> Andy's going to think I've lost my mind, but I was thinking about, it'd be really fun to maybe in the middle, either before the question answer or after the question answer, maybe do a, um, a part where I've seen this on some other streams and this is not what I want my bread and butter to be, but I just thought it'd be fun to celebrate where like maybe I'm blindfolded. So I, you know, have to, um, maybe even, maybe even blindfolded and can't hear, but where like Andy has to instruct me what to do with, with cooking. Um, I don't know, something like that, something kind of fun and different and challenging. So just lots of ideas. So didn't know if you had any other ideas or foods, you know, to celebrate. Cause like for the year I'm celebrating by making another Ukrainian dish, um, a dish or dishes. I have to still figure that out. I've been looking up lots of stuff, but yeah. So trying to figure that out. Let me take, check them out. They're close, but I think they need one more minute. I think one more minute because they're, they're, Pretty brown. I, I want my I want my pretzels nice and brown. They smell so good. Can you smell them over here over there, oh, babe? Yeah, smell. They smell, smell so awesome. delicious. I'm really it's excited. Right now, just the smell. It really is. <laughs> How was the salad, by the way? Was it good? Salad was good. 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 Oh wow. So it says, how about also do top 10 moments? Ooh, I love that. Top 10 moments on the stream, top funny moments, top dishes, etc. cetera. Um, and then Matt says, you're driving, you're driving all these over after the stream, right? Well, I am going to give you some, and I, I made one that is vegan. So um, for, for Erica. I'm glad to see you're functioning, Matt. Top 10 flops. Oh, and we have had some flops. So yes, I love that you include that. Now you know, Ooh, I love these are top 10 drinks. Cause yeah, cause we haven't done any drinks lately. So you know what I think we should do? I think we should reenact the tequila one. Oh, and we should do a tasting. We should do a tasting. I still think they should do a bourbon tasting. I won't, I mean, you can have me try the bourbon tasting, but I'm gonna be making faces all the time because I'm not a bourbon person. Are you ready? Are you ready to see these beauties? Oh my goodness. Look at those gorgeous pretzels. Look at those. Ah, oh, Matt, they look phenomenal. So good. I'm gonna put these over to cool. Oh, these look amazing. Look amazing. Okay. They're gonna be hotter than all get out too. So which, let which me one first, you wait, eat? wait, wait. God, I look like horrible. Sorry guys. Okay, let's get them out here to cool first of all. That I think is the um Vegan, yeah, that's the vegan one. So I'm gonna put this one aside. Put this one aside. Oh man, they smell good. All right. Oops. So these look amazing. Let me just show you. Hey Matt, I'm glad you're uh, functioning. Oh yeah, that's, I didn't even think about that. You're alive. You're alive. That is good. We're glad. We're glad that. And happy birthday. Yes, I appreciate your ideas. I think I think those are great ideas. And what I might do is instead of the top 10, I'll do top five since it's 500, right? I'll do like top five moments, top funny moments. I, I think that's great. I love that. And I can also, um, you know, kind of share, because I know there's ways to share like, oh, would you turn that off for yep. me, sweetie? There's ways to share like um, video during the stream of like, this was, like the top five shorts, these were the top five streams. Um, but I like the ideas of the flops and the drinks too. Maybe, uh, maybe we have to do. Maybe we have to drink the top five drinks. <laughs> yeah, let's do that on a. I actually still think you should do a bourbon tasting. Okay. Regardless. Okay. So 
these are gonna be really hot. So first, I want the, one? One, one of the ways I eat my pretzel is oh look at that! By the way, look at that! Look how beautiful. These are gorgeous. So I always take off that little nugget mm. first. Okay. Oh, mm. Wow. Oh my god. This is why this is why I live for it right there. That white stuff. They are chewy. They're Aha. hot. <laughs> They're hot. Look at that. Wait, I gotta show you. Well, first of all, wait. Wait. Oh. That ASMR. But look at this. Chewy. Oh. The texture's great. Not good. Matt, you're not getting any of these. Yeah, Matt, Bert, they're not. No, no pretzels for you. Mm. Oh, it's so good. So, mm. I'm very happy. These are so good. So, let me get a little bit of honey mustard on there. Uh, so. Here's the thing. I'm a Philly girl, so I have to say, like, the Philly pretzels do not even, there's no competition. I mean, like, the Bavarian oh. ones I made last fall were delicious. They were really good. I just think the Philly one's better. The crunch, so, the color, this is the a, chew. This is a top five hit. The three C's. Make these pretzels. They are so good. Archie. I'm so bummed you're missing this. You'll, I know you'll catch the video. Archie, these are the bomb. They're so good. Now, I mean, they're going to be best when they're warm. Of course. But, wow. These are amazing. Good. So, nice work. if you've never made pretzels, this is a great recipe. Um, I did use bread dough, full disclosure. I've And anything I've read from the other... Um, pretzel recipes you don't have to but I do think this this wonderful texture is really you know part of it is as a result because of the bread dough you'll still get great texture but I'm glad I used the bread dough what's, um what's over there don't you dare did you really take my pretzel when I haven't had lunch no it has your germs on now I they're cuties guess. little stinker um mm. these are so good there. This is like one of my, so DS, I think it's one of the top fives. Yep. This, one top five. this is amazing. Um, at the end of the day, as I mentioned before, when I was rolling them out, the, the main thing that people will, that will inhibit it from, inhibit them from this is the, the rising part. But the dough was really easy to mix up in the, at the beginning, especially, I will say, especially if you have a stand mixer, not that you couldn't do this, do this without a stand mixer but that really did make it very easy um but it was just an easy dough to work with it rose beautifully and, and it was easy to roll out you all saw it super easy to roll out into all these pretzels this was delicious so good um oh very happy and happy for the super bowl we've got these lovely pretzels now which will be great. And for the birthday boy, I will make sure you get some pretzels, including one to bring over to uh, to Erica. So my niece, by the way, is, um, she has really gotten into the bread baking and she is doing amazing work making bread. So I'm a little humble to bring, have my son bring just over a little pretzel to her because um, she knocks out of the park with baking. But, uh, but yeah, so, um, and by the way, thanks uh, Matt, and I love you say I'm down for the bourbon. Uh, maybe not this morning though, right? Uh, how you feeling, by the way, sweetie? So yes, they smell amazing, DS. And oh, good, Maddie. Good for you. Good for you. Yes, excellent. So thank you guys. Thank you, DS. Thank you, Ruby. Thank you, Matt, for coming on to the stream. And for anyone else watching, thank you so much. I appreciate um, your support. Please like and subscribe and share this. Share this with others. This is a great recipe. I highly recommend you try it next week on Friday. I'm streaming a Friday night or a Friday evening stream, a Friday dinner stream for a um, an easy but absolutely delicious gochujang, a creamy gochujang um, pasta with shrimp. So uh, that'll be my dinner. Gochujang has been having a big moment. It's always been something that has been sought after and popular, but there've been a ton of recipes going across the internet using it in lots of different ways. And this um, one 
cook used it in a way that made this creamy pasta that looked amazing. So I'm anxious to try it and I'm sure it'll be delicious and it's gonna be using patchouli pasta, but you could use a really big rigatoni. So stay tuned for that. And until we eat again, happy Super Bowl and go birds. May you guys win and fly Eagles fly. Thank you friends.